In today's tutorial, let's do this amazing looking market bag and I'm gonna take some of the mystery out of this pattern right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. In today's tutorial we're going to work on this most amazing bag. In today's pattern I am going to be changing the directions just slightly and you should know that by me changing the directions just slightly does not make this my own pattern. This makes it an adaptation based on an existing design by Yarnspirations.com. My design uh, changes are just going to make it a little bit easier for you to be able to follow and I'm going to be showing you this particular pattern more up up close. You should also know in this original design I actually contacted Yarnspirations.com the help desk and asked for clarification on this pattern and it turns out that many people have emailed in and phoned in about this particular pattern. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what you're looking at here because even myself I was confused and I think that if we can go through this step by step it'll make it a lot easier for you to follow. So let's go through the photograph that you see here. So for example when we go to start this we're gonna be starting off with doing single crochet rows and we're gonna be going from here all the way to here and we're gonna do a total of four rows in a row before we get to this all lacy work. Now this is what's interesting about this particular pattern is that I was really confused because I can see that there's single crochet over here and I can be sure that it's probably on the other side and there's single crochet on the other side. So when I did this what happens is is that this row is so tight that the lattice work balloons out and just makes it explode like a mushroom at the bottom of the bag and we're gonna get bigger and bigger as this lattice work just increases in size. The stitches do not increase but what in fact because it's so lacy it just wants to bulge out on its own. Let me show you a different point of view that will help you also see this. So here's my really rough diagram of what's going on in this pattern. So we're gonna start off and we're going to do our our uh, single crochet lines and what's gonna happen here is that there's gonna be a big ballooning out so it's gonna start off really narrow and then it's just gonna explode off in this direction and what's gonna happen is that it's gonna explode but on the other side we're gonna bring it back to being narrow again so you'll have what appears to be a really interesting effect. Then we're gonna come and do the sides in this way. So what's happening here is that because it's ballooning out and the way that we're gonna do the end and the sides it makes it bubble down just like this. And so when you look at this bag what's happening is that the lattice work opens up so much that the tops here is so narrow that it balloons out toward the bottom. And if you can look at it from a perspective of like this it makes it a lot easier. So as I mentioned we're gonna be starting off in the front, we're gonna do the lattice front and then come all the way to the other side. So we're gonna start here, do the lattice work and then bring it back to single crochet and then we're gonna go to the sides and then we're gonna do this and it's gonna create this look and it's gonna create it to bubble down just like this and then we're gonna do the handles. So let me show you a little bit more before you get started on this project. So if I turn the bag upside down this is a more accurate way to look at this bag in my opinion. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna do the single crochets back and forth and then we're gonna get to this lattice work and now the lattice work all it is it's, it's uh, trebles and we're going to create a V formations and when you look at the rest of this which I'll have in another diagram you will see that it's this that's creating this length which is gonna cause it to explode to be bigger. The stitch counts do not change down here and when you see it all being worked together so you, even though you're seeing chaining of five it's just causing it to balloon but at the end of it you're gonna see how we're gonna bring it back without really any difficulties. Now I do have another chart uh, diagram to show you. So here's my next diagram. I'm gonna provide these diagrams available on the crochetcrowd.com for this particular particular pattern so that you can download these if you wish. I seriously recommend downloading at least this one. At least because I tell you I actually frogged most of my bag because I was losing my weight on the edge and I'm gonna show you a secret on how I maintain my edge because when you start coming out and this starts ballooning what happens is it causes it to look like a half moon and then you get confused on where the edges are. The first time I went through it honestly I end up growing more and more stitches outward when I was supposed to be continuing up in a straight line. So what I've done is that I've labeled myself to have blue and fuchsia on both sides and let me show you what I did with that in order to keep myself in balance. So here's my sample the way that I started and you can see the lattice work causes it to balloon out and because it does that you lose your point of perspective on the edges. So what I decided to do for myself is that I wrote on the diagram that I showed you is that when I did blue and then the other side is fuchsia. So the other side I marked it with fuchsia lines and this side I marked it with blue. So every time I was starting here going in this direction because that's the way we're gonna do it I marked 
the one stitch where this comes into with a blue stitch marker so that I know exactly where the ending is every time I come back here. Then when I get all the way to the other side I then go up with the fuchsia and then I mark the top of the this one here with the fuchsia string on the other side to show me where that is because when I have it marked up here when I come across back with the blue I know that this fuchsia mark is my ending. Honestly I was adding extra stitches because sometimes at the end I would not think it was the end and I would do another V shape and I was getting a really wonky edges when in fact it should be straight. Now when it's ballooning out like this you really don't see it being straight but it truly is and if you mark each side with the stitch like I'm about to show you in today's tutorial you will find that it will work out really well. So don't be cheap on this yarn uh, for these stitch markers. They will really help you and you can speed across really quickly by doing so. So enough of the chitter chatter. Let's get going. So you're going to need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. You are going to need about four balls of the Lily Sugar and Cream. Get a little bit of extra for you um, just in case that you are a loose crocheter because you'll use up more yarn. This is the color that is in the original bag. It's just the ink that makes it look like a different color. Of course the creativity is up to you on what colors you decide. So let's test you and see how well you can do this bag. So let's get started on today's pattern. I'm just going to start off with a slip knot and we're going to start off very similar to well exactly the way the other bag starts and we're going to do a total of chaining of 39. So I won't do the whole 39 with you but just simply chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Go all the way to 39 for me and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now that I have my 39 done I'm going to start off with row number one. Second chain from the hook just count back one and two. This would be an intermediate level I believe um, project so you should be familiar with crochet. Second chain from the hook and I want you to single crochet yourself all the way across your chain. So it's just a matter of single crocheting and please do that all the way across your chain and I'll see you back at the other side and we'll turn and we'll do rounds uh, rows number two, three and four together. I'm coming up all the way to the end. I just got a couple more chains left and I'm done row number one. So rows two, three and four are identical to each other. They're just one single crochet. Let me get this last one in. I'm all thumbs today. So there it is. And so we're gonna turn our work. Now rows two, three and four are identical. So to start those rows just chain up one and then just one single crochet into each going all the way. So what I want you to do is that I want you to do row, uh, rows number two, three and four all single crochets and then come back here and we'll be begin to start uh, setting ourselves up to do the lattice work and I'm gonna show you um, in more detail exactly what we're gonna be up to. So just single crochet for rows number two, three and four. So I'm coming up to the end of row number four. So now it looks like a regular kind of a square idea and that's perfect because it's exactly what we want but now we're gonna change the game. We're gonna add some lattice work and this is when it's a game changer. So let's turn our work and let's lay it down and I'm gonna show you the diagram once again. So here's the diagram once again and you're gonna notice that we have single crochets and these represent the single crochets that are in the line. There's obviously it's a bigger line than this. This is a cross section a kind of a, a short version of it uh, but you just gotta think it's a little bit longer. So we're gonna start off by chaining sev seven. So five will go up and then three will go over. That's how I've done it. And then the first one is gonna be we're gonna do two together trebles. The one is gonna come to the starting and the other one is gonna skip one and go the second over. We're then gonna chain five and the first one is gonna come back to catch this one and the other one is gonna skip one and come over. And what you're doing is you're creating like this lattice work. So when you look at it from this perspective here you are creating what appears to be monkey bars. You remember those, those domes that you would see in a playground? So that's what we're creating here. So what happens is, is that when you chain over for example you chain over five. You're actually going middle way and then you have to come back with the uh, two trebles together. Okay? So one comes back and reaches over it and the other one goes over and comes back to a center point. And then you chain five. One comes slightly back and the other one goes slightly forward. So we're gonna do that all the way across and at the very end we're gonna chain three and one treble into the final single crochet. So this is actually very very similar to uh, row number three which is existing here and if you look at it here this blue one here 
this is like very very similar to it. The only difference is is that next time instead of coming in every other stitch like this what happens is that it's gonna be after the chain five. So this is this chain five is gonna cause it to explode but it doesn't change the number of these kind of monkey bars that you see there. So let's uh, start off with row number one. This is slightly different from the original pattern from Yarn Inspirations and this is where I've kind of gone on my own and then this whole section here is the same as Yarn Inspirations and then we finish off this slightly different. You're gonna see what I'm talking about for ballooning right after this. Before I begin, sorry, I just wanna share one more thing. So I had blue here and I had fuchsia here. So what I'm, even though this is a representation of what's inside and not truly this at this particular moment, it's very, it's very much the same. So what I wanna do is that as I chain up my seven in the fifth one, I'm gonna put a blue stitch marker in. So I know where that is next time I see it and I'm going to get all the way to the end and then move up. So when we go to start this particular diagram, the blue here is actually the first one and then the fuchsia which is the next row is here. Okay, so I want to show you how I'm doing that with the stitch marker because you'll never lose your edge otherwise. So let's begin. We're gonna chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five. Pinch it there for five. It'll just save you some time. And the six, seven, and eight. Let go of the stitch and right where I pinched is the number five one and I wanna grab my stitch marker. Just fold it in half. This is just odds and sods of yarn. Just save you some money and just pull through that the fifth one and just kinda like pull it through so it's just kinda dangling there and kinda locked in so it's, it's not gonna fall out on you. So you know the next time you come here and let me pull that other diagram back up. So the next time you come up here you're gonna see that this stitch marker is right in the corner here. So that when you are working on this and you get the other diagram here, every time you get to the fifth one here, you know the next one is going to land right directly over top of that. Do you see that? So when you come into here, you'll mark this one here and you know the next one that's gonna finish will be right over top. It is very, very easy for this particular uh, lattice work to get confused at the end to add on extra stitches and you'll go all wonky. This just saves you a ton of time and a lot of aggravation. Let's continue. So coming back to this, what we want to do is two together trebles and we're gonna wrap. So I'm gonna hold this down with my finger. It prevents it from spinning loosely around because it can spin loosely. So I just kind of pinch and then I go down to the very first one where the chain is coming out of. I pull through, pull through two and two. Do not finish it, hold it. So then I want you to skip one stitch and treble into the next one. So we wrap the hook. See how I'm just kind of pinching and go into the second one over and treble. Okay, so now I got three on my hook. So now I want to pull through all three and that finishes that stitch. So you can see here one is just slightly come back and the other one slightly move forward. So let's begin the next one. So we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now this one here, whenever we do this, remember like the monkey bars, the first one has to go where this one finished. So just wrap the hook and it's, it's together trebles. So pull through. Pull through two and two. Do not finish it. Shift over. So skip one. Go to the second and treble again as it together. You have three on your hook now. Pull through all three. And that concludes off another one. Do you see how it's gonna balloon at this point? See how this is much wider? Therefore it's gonna really start to balloon on you. So chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Again come to the one that you've already been into and it's together trebles. Don't finish that stitch though and then just wrap it again. Skip one and go to the second over and then finish it this time so that you got three loops on the hook. Do you get that? So it's exactly what you're seeing in the pattern. See how they're kind of linked together that way? So you have this chain one space or so you have a stitch space in the middle. So let's just review one more time. So chain five, one, two, three, four, and five and then treble. So come into the one that you were already in. Pull through, pull through two and hold. Don't finish it. Wrap again. Skip one stitch and go to the second over. So this is a way of establishing the lattice work and you're gonna go all the way across. You can see it's already starting to balloon. See how it's just opening up like a 
semicircle, it does that and that's what it's, that's what it's meant to do. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to continue all the way across this line. This is row number one and then after this there's gonna be a repeat of row two and three for the remainder until we get to the 20 inches that we need before then we start bringing it to a conclusion on the other side. So finish this row first and then we'll review row number two and three. So as we get all the way across you're going to notice that there's one treble that's standing by itself. It's in its own stitch. So you're going to notice when you get to the end of the row there's going to be one stitch left and this comes into that one stitch. So we're going to do the two together and then we need to chain three and then put the treble in to maintain this, this vertical line going up in the pattern. So this is very much like the blue one and if you looked at the original pattern that I had over here, do you see? You finished one early and then the final one is in a single crochet. So let's begin to do the next row or uh, let's finish this row first and then move along. So I'm near the end and this is what I mean by ballooning. So see how it's kind of leaning? So you're thinking to yourself, okay well this looks like it's a straight line but technically it's not. And this is where I got really confused and this is why I had a frog most of my project back out. So now that I got one stitch left I have to chain three, one, two and three and then I treble into the final stitch. And that concludes this row number one and this is very similar to the blue which I put in a stitch marker on the other side before I started so that I could keep in balance. You will notice that it looks like it can be a semicircle at this point. This is the ballooning starting to happen. So this is the top rim of the, of the, of the bag and then it's gonna balloon out underneath. Let's move along to the next row and let's pull up the diagram once again. So now that I finished this blue line which is the, the, which is the same as the original that we started with, okay. So just pretend it's the blue line now and just move to this diagram. So we're right over here. So we're gonna chain up five to begin and then we're gonna reach down and treble into the first crossing point here, okay. And then you're going to chain five and then do the together once again to do the crisscross all the way across to the end. So this time when you finish a fuchsia line you're going to get right to the end and the last two will be together. So it's gonna reach over to the crossing point and it's gonna reach down to where the stitch marker is that was marked with blue. So as I start up this one here I'm going to put in a fuchsia crochet marker right here so that when I get across with the blue that comes back across I'm just gonna know that this is my ending here instead of adding extra stitches at the end. I'm telling you it'll save your life. <laughs> well I don't know if it's that good but it really saved me from a lot of frustration. So let's begin the, the next round. So I have my fuchsia string just handy with me and I'm going to chain up five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Technically this is where I want the stitch marker but I can't place it in yet. So I'm gonna do the first reaching over to the crossing point like it shows in the diagram and it's a treble and just go right into the crossing point. See how these two came together? Just go right into the top, pull through and you wanna finish the stitch. Okay, so this is the flat edge coming up. This one is reaching over. You just really can't see it. This is where you can get all screwed up and what I want you to do is just right under here I want you to place that stitch marker to represent and every time I went across in this row I added more and more stitch markers up the side of it so that I always knew exactly where I was without any questions. Okay, so now the re remainder of this row is very similar to what we're about to do all what we've already done. So we're gonna do the chaining of five. So one, two, three, four, five. We go back to the crossing point for a treble. It's two together as always. Don't finish that stitch and then the next one is the treble into the next crossing point. Okay and it's just exactly what you did before. The difference is is that you're not worrying about these single crochets anymore. You're just worrying about these crossing points. So chain five, one, two, three, four and five. Go into the first crossing point that you were just at for the first one and then don't finish that stitch and then wrap the hook twice and then go to the next crossing point. So remember what I said with the whole chaining of five element to it. The chaining of five gets you halfway across or gets you halfway across. So one, two, three, four, five. So when you look at it from this perspective it's over. So you have to go back to the one that you were just at the crossing point. Do not finish that stitch and then wrap the hook a second time and go into the next crossing point. 
okay, and then bring it all together. You get that? Does that make sense? So chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so go into the last crossing point you were just at. Don't finish that stitch and then wrap the hook twice and go into the next crossing point. And you're gonna do that until you get close to the very end and I'll meet you at the end of the row. And then you can start really start seeing this thing come together. If at any one point when you go into a crossing point and there's not two stitches coming together, like two uh, trebles coming together, something is wrong, you have to frog. So if you only, if you ever get to a, a, a point where there's a crossing point and only see one stitch coming out, it means that you miss the other side. I've done it once or twice, I think maybe three times. So uh, it does happen, so it, you're better to frog because you can't recover from that. Okay, so just go all the way across like you already know, it's two together trebles, just reaching across to do the monkey bar kind of lattice work that you see. And I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm getting near to the end of the row. One, two, three, four, five. And I already know that but the blue is helping me also to determine that of where that last stitch is that it's gonna go into. And that's why I've done it this way so that I'm not, I gotta reach over. So the blue is really close to me at this point and I'm just gonna finish this. So if you look at the chart, let's see where the blue is and let's see how we're gonna finish this row. So we're coming up to the end of the blue. Okay, so the blue is sitting right here and so you'll notice here we're actually right here. So what we have to do is that we have to chain five, go back to the last crossing and then we go straight down into where the blue has been marked in order to create that. Okay, so these two come in together like that. So just it gives you good indication. Without doing this with the stitch marker, I'm telling you I had really funky edges but I don't know how many times I've already said that before. <laughs> it's so true though, it really is. So let's finish off this row. So we're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. And I wrap the hook twice and I'm gonna go back to the last crossing point. And, but I don't finish it. And then this time I wrap twice and it goes straight down to where the stitch marker is. And that indicates to me where the last stitch is. Okay, and then you pull through all three together. So now I'm officially done. Okay, so before I was going all wonky with that. So I'm ready now. This is my fuchsia going all the way across. Okay, so I have it marked on this side. So now when I turn it, because I'm on the blue side, I know that I'm gonna start with the blue side once again uh, as I go all the way up. So let's do the blue side. Once again, this time the blue that, that we're doing is not going into single crochet. So I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do with this one. So this is row number three. So you're gonna repeat row number two and three until you get the, to the designated uh, dimensions that I'll talk about in a bit. So I'm bringing back my diagram. So I've just got my fuchsia. I've come all the way across and here's where I am. So when I start my blue again, just like I did before, it's chain seven. I'm gonna mark that fifth one in with a stitch marker and then I'm gonna come back and do my together and then just do the exact same thing at the end. And again at the end, it's just like before where we come across and then chain three and then a single, or sorry, a treble all the way down. And this is coming down into the position where the fuchsia has been marked on the project. Let's begin row number three. So row number three is the blue. So it's gonna chain seven. So one, two, three, four, and five. Pinch it at five, six, and seven. And what I want you to do is that at the fifth mark is that I want you to slip in your hook and get that stitch marker in so that you know where that ending is gonna be next time you get back to this point. Right there. Okay, so now let's begin. So the first one is gonna be at the crossing point where, right where we started. So we're gonna wrap the hook and come in. And we don't finish that. The other one together is gonna be to the next crossing point that you, that you can just pull over and see. Okay, so now you're gonna go across just like you did before. So basically the rows number two and three, the only difference is, is that how they start is different and that should make a lot of sense to you because the lattice work is not uniform in the sense that every row is exactly the same. They're shifting and if you look at it from a, 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 a hexagon point of view or a pentagon point of view, you can actually see that. So actually it's more of a pentagon so it, or a hexagon so it's flat. There's six flat sides. So let's begin. So chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. Come back to where the last one was that you put in. 
cut the crossing point and then finish it off by reaching over to the next crossing point to finish those off. So chain three or chain fives. So one, two, th two, three, four, and five. Come to the first crossing point that you already were at and then wrap again and go to the next one that's available to you and reach over and then finish it off. So that's what I want you to do all the way across. You already know how to do this. So please do this. This is row number three. So I'm coming up to the near to the end and I'm on the blue and I have my fuchsia in here and let's just take a look back at the chart and see what's going on. So row number three we're just coming back across here. So what's happened if you've noticed. So the last one has to then go into the very last one. This is where the fuchsia is marked and then we're, so these two are together and then we're gonna chain three and then treble right down into where the fuchsia is marked as well. So let's bring it back our project and finish this row. So coming back all the way across. So I have my fuchsia here. I can see that I'm gonna have to do a crossover. So cha uh, chain five, two, three, four, five and I have to do it together. And the second one is gonna be right to where the fuchsia is. That's the very last stitch. This will happen every time you're on the blue line which is round number three. So you got that together and then to finish this chain three, one, two, three which is a partial kind of a, of a triangle and then treble right down to where the fuchsia is marked once again. So every time you're finishing round number three this is exactly where you're finishing just like you see. So now when we go to turn our work just like so I'm ready and fuchsia then will become my next color up which will, which would be row number two. So I'm gonna leave the rest of this uh, to you uh, as far as this area and you have to repeat round number two or rows number two and three over and over until you get 20 inches from this point here until the other side. So it's gonna be a long massive distance and I'm just gonna review the chart one last time before I let you do that. So we're ready for the fuchsia here and you can see it's right here. So we've just come across with the blue and then we're back here again. So it's just, I just did a longer way of this just to give you an indication that it's just a repeat pattern over and over. But when I really did it myself I was just looking at the basically blue or fuchsia. <laughs> so two or three in order to do it. So I need you to repeat rows number two and three. Uh, just continuous until you get your 20 inches in and your line should be horizontal like this. It doesn't always look that way but if you're marking it with the stitch markers on the end it will be and then we're gonna come this, uh, bring this to a conclusion on the other side. So I have altered the other side of the pattern so I want you to get to your 20 inches and then meet me back here in just a minute. So here I am. I've got my 20 inches done. You, just so you know this took a few hours of work in order to get it to this level and I've got my stitch markers all labeled up on the one side here so I knew I was doing okay and then the other side. So when you look at it here you can kind of see it's almost like a dress. So what I want you to do is that I want you to finish your 20 inches and get to your row number three is done. So this is row number three that you see here and we're going to start and start doing a decrease and this is a different instruction that's a, than, the, than that was available on the, on the original. So let's turn our work and let's go on to the new section of what we need to do and I'll explain why we're doing it this way in, instead of the other way. So in this row that we're about to do what we have to do is we have to get back to the idea that there's one stitch left between these these uh, lattice work. So what we were doing the whole time is that we were doing this and putting in a chain five. Well this time we only have to chain one uh, it, when we're going to separate these things so that when we come in the next round our row after that we can have a nice conclusion and both sides of the bag look equal. So let's uh, begin to do that. So what we're going to do on this round is that we're gonna do it as if it is like the fuchsia but instead this time we want to do a chain one in between instead of a chain five. So let's begin and this is just like the fuchsia round so this is like number two but this is a, a variation of it. So let's begin. We're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, five and this time what we want to do is that we want to wrap the hook twice and we want to go to the crossing point and pull through. Okay and we are going to finish that or sorry we're then going to um, finish that completely 
okay? And what I would do is put your fuchsia stitch marker in there. You've done them all this way. You might as well finish that off so you know exactly where you are. And now what I want you to do instead of chaining five to begin the next one, we're only gonna chain one, okay? And it will make sense just in the next row and we want to begin to do the uh, trebles together. So wrap, come into the same one that you were just at. Oops, excuse me, I dropped my stitch. So wrap it and then come into the same one you were just at and then wrap it again and go to the next one and then pull them together. Okay, and then you're gonna only chain one and then begin again. So wrap the hook, come into the one you were just at and then wrap the hook again and come into the next one. Just like that. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna make it nice and narrow back at the top so then when you do your single crochets again it'll be ready for it and it'll be great. So continue to do that, to do that all the way across. So I'm coming up all the way across so you're gonna notice here it's starting to buckle it back inward uh, to create that nice edge that you wanted. Remember the length that we had when we started? So this is gonna create it to kind of semicircle in the other direction which ca causes the ballooning shape. So I'm coming up near the end and it's just like I'm finishing off the fuchsia line. So instead of chaining five I'm only chaining one and I'm going into the same one that I was just at and then I reach over to the blue like so, just like that and it's just like ending in the fuchsia. I just pull through all three and I'm done. Okay, so you can see then the difference is, is that it's not as wide and it's just like when we started over here. See how it was not as wide on the end so you see it's very much equal. So let's begin and we're gonna do four rows of single crochet and let me show you what to do with those and that's gonna be beginning the other side of the edge. So let's turn our work to begin and let's begin. So let's begin row number one of doing the banding and then the, the other two, three and four are identical to just single crocheting across. So let's chain up one and we're gonna come into the same stitch we were just in and single crochet and in the chain one spaces I want you to put only one single crochet and then in the next one with they're coming together just put one into that one. So this whole row is one into the, uh, one single crochet into the chain one space and one single crochet to where they've come together in the single in the trebles there. So please do that all the way across. You're gonna notice that it's gonna pull everything nice together uh, just perfectly. So just a single crochet one in each of the, where the trebles are coming and one in each of the chain one spaces. So I've come up all the way across and now I'm back to my chaining of uh, 38. Remember how we started off in chain 39 and then we went second chain from the hook? Well that meant that there was 38 single crochets and now that I have that. So now that I look at this point and I bring up the other one, you should see that they're pretty close to the same because it's the same amount of stitch. Now because I haven't done uh, a few more rows, it hasn't pulled together quite as tight as it did in the original and that's because I have to do a few more rows. So I need you to turn your work and I want you to do rounds or rows number two, three and four just chaining up one again like you'd already done before and then one single crochet into each going all the way across. So please do this for row number two, three and four. When we come back then we're gonna move along and we're gonna just uh, investigate this a little further and then we're gonna start doing handle work and sides all at the same time and we'll begin to do that next. So I came up all the way to the end of this and now I'm gonna fasten this off because we're gonna do the handle. Now the handle is slightly different from what I've, uh, from what the original pattern is. I'm going to do the handle as a one piece unit and I got a really cool effect to, to show you and it will save you time as well instead of having to sew. So I'm just sewing in my, my final string. I'm just getting underneath the stitches. Remember that when you put in your strings if you go in three different directions um, it actually will hide the work a lot better and it will, will hide your loose ends a lot better and it will not fall out as well. Okay so in and out three times and I do that with all of my, my tails and all of my projects as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the original and I had the string that I started off with. Okay, this is where I was and I'm gonna put this on 
and we're gonna then start working on the sides and I'm gonna go through the steps uh, just verbally with you and then we're gonna go through steps and physically actually do the work. So let me hide in my loose ends here. So at this point what you're looking at is the front and the back of the bag and then we're gonna do the sides in just a moment. So I will be right back and I'll pull up the diagram. Well actually I'm gonna pull up the photo, show you what my game plan is and then I need you to also pull out all of your stitch markers that are in the side on both sides. Let's pull all those out next and when we come back we'll get started on doing the sides and the handles. So we're now ready to do the sides of the bag and we have the top and we have the bottom. Okay so this is front and the back. So if you were to put it up like this you can see that the shape is almost there but it's not quite there yet. Okay so what we have to do is that we have to bring up the sides. So we're gonna start on one side and then we're gonna work our way across and then chain extra and jump to the other side and then come all the way down the other side and then chain and then jump back. And what's gonna happen on this particular pattern, the way that I've designed the handle and again this is not my own pattern, it's an adaptation. We're just gonna work our way, we're gonna go down the side of the bag and then chain up and go across the top and then down the other side coming up and then coming back across. So we're just gonna go up and around. So the backs and the, fr and the front I'm going to leave this alone here and just kinda going up in a sweeping motion all in one uh, particular rotation. Therefore you do not have to sew at this particular point like it suggests and again this is completely optional. So let me show you what to do. So bring in the same color yarn. That's kinda what I want and I want to start off in the corner of it, it can be the front or the back it doesn't matter and you can just start off in the corner. Now there's four rows here so therefore there's gonna be four single crochets uh, because you're working down the side of the bag. Okay so we were working this way now we're gonna work down the side. So let's just join this yarn, chain one and then single crochet into that same one and what I want to do is I wanna hide this loose end in so I just wanna bury it underneath the stitches. So I have three more to go on this to satisfy it so just single crochet across working down the sides of the single crochet. So here's what we're gonna do different on this particular formation. So you will see that there's gapping spaces. Okay so you see, the, you see this and then you see a center post and then another gapping space and then they're crossing and then there's a gap space and gap space. We wanna work in these gap spaces. So what we need to do is that we need to bring these together so it kinda looks similar to this but we need to bring it so that it, it looks really quite, quite cool. So in the first gapping space I want you to only put one single crochet. That's it. The next one I want you to put two single crochets. So just jump all the way over and you're gonna notice it's gonna start pulling everything together. So the next one is gonna be one single crochet. The gap space, the next gap space there's gonna be two. And I need you to do that until you get to the other side of this thing uh, to the bag. So there's gonna be one in the next, go to the next gap space there's gonna be two. And this was one of the reasons why it's so important that you keep an eye on those edges as you were going across because you know you're gonna have a nice smooth edge when you're done. So the next one is gonna be one single crochet, the next one is gonna be two. Okay and it's one and the next one is two. So did you notice I didn't say to put any specific number? I want you to do that this way because you may have different tension than me. And so this will keep it in balance for you. So one and then jumping to the next one for two and then one and then the next one is two and then one. Next one is two. Next one is one and I want you to keep going all that until you hit that other single crochet line that's coming up. So that was one, this one's two. So one, even if you get an extra one in there it's not gonna be a, a deal breaker by any stretch. As long as you're consistent that's all that you have to matter. So one and then this one is two. So we're now run into the side of the single crochet. Remember there's four rows there so there's only gonna be four single crochets working its way up. So one, two, 
three and four and you're not done. Okay, so you've just come all the way across. You can see that it just made the semicircle. It's kind of like the buckling look and now we we're ready now to make a chain handle. So we have to do a chain and then extend over to the other side of where this is. So we're gonna do a chain of 60. So let's do that. So we just immediately start. So just one, two, three, four, five. Do all the way to 60 and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now that I have my 60 in here is the handle and it'll thicken up obviously as we go. So without twisting the chain I'm gonna come to the next corner. So just come all the way across. So this is either the front or the back. It doesn't matter. You're gonna jump this one here and just come into the corner and remember what it was. There was four single crochets and going down the side of the double crochet. So please do that. So one, two, three, and four. Now just like you did before, so you're gonna do this and the first chain space here will be one single crochet, the next one will be two and you're gonna do that all the way across on this one. So I don't think I need to follow you on that one. So just one and the next one has two. So please do that all the way across to the other side and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So I'm coming up on the other side and this one ends in two. So I'm back at the band. This is either the front or the back. It doesn't matter which one it is. So it's just gonna be four single crochets going up the side of it. So one, two, three, and four. And so now we're ready for the other side of the band. So here's the other side here. Okay, so we're gonna do this side here. So again, remember what it was? It was chaining of 60. So please do that. So one, two, three, four, and five. Go all the way to 60 for me and then we're gonna join it on the other side. So we'll just jump over, over all this and come to the other side where we have already started and to do the single crochets all the way around. So I now have my chaining of 60 and this is the other side of the handle and I'm coming back to the other side. So this is either front or the back. It doesn't matter which one it is but this is where I started to do the single crochet. So just insert your hook into the first single crochet and just do a slip stitch to join it as you've gone all the way around. So at this point you should have appearing to have two handles just like you see here and now we have to thicken it up and you can see it's really starting to take its shape. So you only have three rounds left to go. So what I want you to do is chain up one and we're gonna put one single crochet into each one of the single crochets all the way around. So you don't have to worry about skipping any gap spaces anymore. You're just gonna go all the way around like that. Now when you hit to the handle, so let's follow it around. So say a single crochet around. I'm gonna hit the handle. You're gonna put one single crochet in each of the chains and continue all the way around till you get back to the spot. So I need you to do three rounds exactly what I just showed you and uh, it's gonna be amazing. So remember that. So I'm coming up all the way back around in my first rotation. We make sure that you do not twist these handles so that when it follows around that it's not having any kind of weird twists on you. And then when you come back all around you just want to come into your very last stitch for a single crochet and then just join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with. So now what I need you to do is three more rounds of just single crochet right around and so you'll notice that the handles are more thicker this time that we did it and I want you to go around three more times just starting up with just chain up one, one single crochet into each single crochet all the way around. Please do that for three revolutions. When we come back I will have all three done and we can see exactly what it looks like. I'm now just coming around the end of finishing up my whole bag here. Just the last stitch here. It's uh, really kind of a cool idea. I am actually was really excited about this bag. Uh, it was different from others that I had seen and when I go to finish off I just want to make sure that I do a good job of hiding in the loose end or the ends. So I'm just gonna cut it about 12 inches long and pull through the loop and then just grab a darting needle I want to be able to weave this in and out. Remember what I said before if you were watching is that if you weave it in and out three times underneath the stitches it will never fall out on you. So just going in, just go in a different path but in the same direction for number two. Again different path 
but in the other direction for number three and then you can safely trim that out because it'll never be able to stretch in three different directions at the same time to fall out on you. So that concludes making this bag and this is a really kind of a neat concept. You'll see that the bag stays completely open like this so therefore you can get your uh, fruits and vegetables inside your bag and then it will buckle out when you go to use it. So really quite excited about this bag. Um, I noticed that a lot of other tote bags that I do it's really hard to get sometimes the fruits and vegetables in. So this kind of opens up and when you lift it it will nicely close on you. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Enjoy and have a great day and hopefully you will enjoy your new market bag. Until then we'll see you. Bye bye.